the truth, you can't handle the truth. Maybe we should chug on over to Mamby Pamby land where maybe we can find some self-confidence for you, you jack wagon. Coming to you live from his padded cell high atop Bethel Church, the most heralded, the most despised talk show in all of human history. This is the talk show Hell Hates. This is Pastor Mike Online. And here we are coming to you live from our top secret broadcasting bunker here at Area 52. This is the talk show Hell Hates. And um, Microsoft Bing, you got to see this. I just, just now... Got a pop-up here um, on my screen. It's right here. Chat with GPT-4. Uh, the one I've used lately is 3.5. For free on Chrome, get hundreds of daily chat turns with Bing AI. Ooh. Um... I'm telling you, uh, see this guy here? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you. He's a false prophet, and I'll and I'll prove it. So is this. Okay, the AI is about to become the false prophet of all false prophets. Um. Anyway, let's get in. Let's get into the program. I've got some real high tech um, video for you. I tried to pull this up on my screen and uh, couldn't couldn't do it. And uh, let me start again. Anyway, um, I was on Instagram last night and. Uh, was just flipping through. I, I subscribed to like, I don't know, half a dozen UFO uh, video groups or whatever. And uh, one of them I don't like because like half of the videos, whoever this guy is, half the videos he puts up, you can tell are fakes. Now, the, the UFO believing people have got enough problems without someone throwing in fake UFO videos because that's what apparently that's what the Pentagon wants everybody to believe. They're fake. That or that's that's you know that's just a you a misrepresentation or a misidentification. It's uh yeah it's a it's a swamp thing is what it is. But anyway, um and so I'd already seen all the I'm doing my my phone thing. I'd already seen all of the the UFO videos for the day, and I get this recommendation video, and it's about the upcoming um, solar uh, eclipse that is going to happen April the 8th, and it, it's not going to be right over Festus this time. It's going to be about 30, 40 miles maybe 50 miles south of us and um, you know I just think it's cool that in my lifetime I've got you know we had the we had the eclipse in 2017 now we're having the eclipse in 2024 I mean that's almost back to back as far as my life is concerned and um, I've seen a several lunar eclipses uh, but these solar eclipses absolutely fascinate me. And there again, it's part of proving that the earth is unique amongst every other stellar object that there is. The earth is unique. And I believe, I, if, you, if you want to call me something, if you want to call me something, I'll send you a list. Um... A geocentrist. I believe that the earth literally is the center of God's 
plan, God's design for this universe. You can talk to me all day long about the trillions and quintillions and septillions of different galaxies, star clusters that have to have livable planets. But I'm telling you, man is unique. When Genesis 1-1 is all you need. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Bada boom, bada bing. The heaven and everything that's in it belongs to a different category and a different group than the earth does. God separated them. And I believe the focus of this entire creation from one end of the universe to the other end of the universe, wherever that is, is that man is the focus of that. And so anyway, we've got a, we've got a moon that is from, it is the, the exact right distance from earth. And the earth is the exact right distance from the sun. It, that it needs to be in order for the moon, when it crosses the path of the sun during the daytime, that it completely covers the, uh, the globe of the sun so perfectly that you can see the sun's corona or just the very, very outer edge of, of the sunlight as it's first coming off of the sun. There isn't another planet in this solar system that has it that way. Not Mercury, not Venus, not Earth, or well, Earth does, not Mars, not Jupiter. None of them have what we have. God gave that to us. Now, here's this false prophet. And I can tell you he's false right off the bat. His name is Dr. Michael Brown, and automatically he spelled his name wrong. He's got it as M I K E L. Now, I'm a Michael, and you don't spell it that way. So maybe his mother didn't know how to spell. We'll allow for that. Now, I'm going to show you some real high-tech video here. And uh, what caught my attention was he's going to talk about the eclipse, and uh, then he is going to say that it is totally 100% a sign from God. And I want you to listen how he starts this, this video out. I'm going to put the video here, and I'm going to turn the microphone there, and let's see if we can hear and see what he says. If you believe we're in the last days, follow me now so I can steal your money. Yes, he's. I looked him up. <clears throat> I could not find this video on YouTube. Um, I tried Instagram on my desktop. I couldn't find the video. I could only find it on my phone, so apologize for that. But I think it's funny. I think it's hilarious. The guy starts out saying, Jesus said that a wicked and adulterous generation, now he's not using the King James, but anyway, he says a wicked and adulterous generation always seeketh after a sign and no sign will be given you except the sign of, of Jonas. For, 
and then he goes into saying, God's given us a sign. You just told on yourself, you dupe. Wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And so he, he tells this tale. You know what? I had, um, I restarted my computer before the broadcast, and I had the path for the eclipse pulled up here. And um, let's see if I can find it again. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. He makes this claim that, oh, I don't want that. He makes this claim that uh, because the eclipse allegedly, and I'm going to say allegedly, because the eclipse allegedly passes through certain towns named Nineveh, certain towns named, um, what else did he say? What One, one he, he found an obscure little tiny hamlet in Indiana that up until 1902 had its own post office, but they closed it down in 1902. And according to the Census Bureau, there is one person who lives in this unincorporated area of Indiana that was formerly called Rapture, Indiana. There's a sign for you there. I mean, I'm, my goodness, I'm sold. I think the rapture is going to happen on the day of the eclipse. That's what he's trying to sell you people. And what's hilarious to me, but it angers me too, this guy's trying to sell you on the, the idea that the rapture could happen go, coinciding with the eclipse. But he's going to get up Sunday and he's going to preach some kind of message that I guarantee you is designed to have you reaching inside your pocketbook or your wallet and giving him your money. Now, number one, here's what I'm going to do. I, I am prepared. I, have, I am prepared. Hang on. Some of you are going to ask, where did Pastor Mike get that kind of money? I am prepared. If the rapture does not happen on April the 8th, coinciding with the eclipse, I am prepared to apologize to Dr. Michael Brown by sending in $1. Okay? This will be my token of sorrow and um, begging his forgiveness if the rapture, now if the rapture happens, okay, that's what I mean. If the rapture happens, well, now that I think of it, if the rapture happens, there, there'll be no way he's going to get a dollar from me. So I'll be in, I'll be in heaven. I will. Now, um, let's do this. Okay? He, he mentioned the idea that because this eclipse, the path of the eclipse is going to take you through towns called Nineveh. And it's going to take you through um, uh, uh, the part of Kentucky where the ark is. Did, can you imagine that? Where the ark is. That they're going to be an eclipse right there where they built the ark. That, I mean, that's proof right there. Do you not understand that when, a, when people began to migrate from east to west in this country in the 1800s, most of these settlers were very Christian-oriented relig re religious people. In other words, they were very, very, 
very few Jews, almost no Muslims, no Buddhist, nothing. It was all Christian, quote unquote, Christian people. And as they migrated west and they built towns, they built towns just like Festus that were named after people and or cities in the Bible. Towns like Salem. And Salem was not named after cigarettes. Salem was named after Shalem, the city of peace. In uh, Genesis 33 is what it's called, Shalem. But anyway, Salem. Um, oh, let's see here. I, can't, I just drew a blank. But Festus, Missouri is out of the Bible. It's out of the book of Acts. And they literally had a ceremony where a lady went and opened up the Bible, King James. And the first proper name she found in the Bible was the man named Festus that Paul was trying to witness to. And, and he's the one that said, thou, thou dost almost persuade me to believe. Okay, But he didn't in the end. He died and went to hell. So anyway, they named this town Festus after a town in the Bible. It's common in America that you will find cities and towns all across America that are named after biblical events, biblical stories, Bible people. You have Joshua, uh, cities named Joshua. Um, th then you have the Catholic cities, uh, St. Mary, St. In fact, in fact, let me, let me show you this, okay? This is uh, the area of Missouri by the Mississippi River. And in fact, look at that. The, the eclipse is going to go across the Mississippi River. Well, that's, that's amazing. And then, then, oh, look at there, look at there. The eclipse is going to go through the town of St. Genevieve. Whew. Man, my heart is racing here. Do you know what? She was a, a Catholic saint, Genevieve. And, and that's just amazing that, that there's, a, there's a saint now involved in this. And, and, and that means something, people, I'm telling you. An evil and adulterous generation always seeketh after a sign. And it just it, it amazed me. It, was, it humored me for a minute that he started out reading that verse or quoting it. And then he, it talk because it talks about the evil and adulterous people doing that. And then he says, "Look at the sign. God showing us signs. You just named yourself as evil and adulterous generation." Now, uh, I typed his name in at Yahoo, and um, there was a video recommended to me. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go. And it's, it's titled, You'll Wait Forever, Waiting on the Right Time. And I want you to notice this here. If you can't read this, I'm going to read it for you. God will not give instructions to someone who is doing nothing. You know what? I need my sound effects back. And I had them up. I had them up. Um, oh, come on. Are you kidding me? Oh, my. It's wanting me to activate this old iPad. And I don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Uh -huh. There we go. Anyway, let me read this text to you. Dr. Michael Brown, God will not give instructions to someone who is doing nothing. Oh, wrong one. Wrong! What do you think God's instructions are for? It's to take us 
from doing nothing to doing what God instructs us to do. Uh, he can he, he can't trust you because of your lack of obedience. That's not what the Bible says. Get to work. Trust God and he will guide you. Remember, beloved, faith without works is dead. He is a works-based blessing preacher. He convinces his audience, his crowd, that God will not accept you. God will not do anything for you. God will not bless you unless you perform, unless you do. But that's not biblical. That's, that's the Mount Sinai covenant. That's not the Mount Zion covenant. That's not the covenant that we are under now. The covenant that we're under now is salvation by grace through faith, not works. Listen to what he says here. So if you continue to wait for the perfect time or the right season to do something, you'll waste the, your entire life waiting. And I can tell you now, if you've been waiting for stuff, it's time to stop waiting and start doing whatever. Stop! What did Jesus tell the disciples in Acts chapter 1? to go to Jerusalem and do? What did he tell them to do? He told them to wait for the promise. So, did God tell them that they needed to feed hungry people and that they needed to build a mega church and that they needed to bring in seed offering to prove their faith? Or did God, did Jesus just simply tell them, go to Jerusalem and wait? They that do for the Lord shall renew their strength. Is that what it says? No. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with eagles. They shall run and not faint. They shall not be weary. Close. I, I got it close to what the verse really says. But you get what I'm saying. In the wilderness, God never told Israel, I'm not moving until you do. I am not leaving this tabernacle until you show me you've got some faith and you get up and you pack everything up and you start moving toward the promised land, then I will lead you. Did God ever say that? No. Mm -hmm. Never. Never intended it. Never. God commanded Israel the exact opposite. He said, in fact... I don't want you to move until I do. How could Israel know where to go if the pillar of cloud by day, pillar of cloud by night, didn't already move ahead of time? The Jews would get up every morning and look toward the tabernacle. If the cloud had moved over to the next valley, let's say, then everybody in the camp knew, pack up, let's all line up. God's going to lead us someplace else. Let's hope it's the promised land. And they did that for 40, 41 years about. But this guy would have you believe that you'll get nothing from God. See, what he's doing, he's setting everybody up for the offering. He is going to bring this message, out, and I don't have the whole message. I have, I have just enough. And I, I went to his website. I looked at some of his other videos. And I can, I can just tell you, he's a name it, claim it, word faith, make me rich pastor. 
what God wants you to do. And then you'll run into that thing that God designed for you. You'll walk right into that thing, but why would God give instructions to somebody who's not doing anything? Why would God tell you anything when you won't listen? And the church said, Let me tell you something. I'm just going to be, I'm going to be honest for a change. No, I'm going to be honest. Some of the greatest blessings that God has ever given me um, some of the coolest revelations from God's Word has been at times when I totally did not deserve it. Totally didn't deserve it. And you know what God was doing? He was not honoring my disobedience. God was showing me Mike, everything I do in your life is always going to be by grace through faith. Do you believe me? Yes, God, I do. I believe what God said in his word. Preachers like that fall into the category Ezekiel 13, Ezekiel 24. They are false prophets. Uh, second. 2 Peter chapter 2, the book of Jude, Matthew uh, 24. Paul spoke of after, after my departure, grievous wolves will enter in, not sparing the flock. Did you know that guys like him and, and uh, Joel Osteen and Joyce Myers, did you know that they don't care if you if you go to the ATM in one of their churches or one of their speaking engagements and take out every dollar you have in your bank account and put it in their offering plate, do you know they don't care? Jimmy Swaggart um, was, uh, if you remember, he got caught with prostitutes. He claimed that all he was doing was watching them. That's what he claimed. But anyway, um, before that, before he got caught, there was, an, there was an elderly woman that was watching him on TV. And she had quite a bit of money from her husband. Her husband was wealthy, and she, when he died, left her all of his money, and it was in the millions. And she decided, she had several children, and she decided that she would rewrite her will without telling her children. And she had a lawyer draw up a will that gave basically all the money she had to Jimmy Swaggart Ministries. When she died and the family found out through the lawyer that, uh, she, that the mother had left nothing for them whatsoever, they couldn't believe it. So they begged Jimmy Swaggart Ministries. They begged Swaggart. They said, our mother, she was not in her right mind. To what, you know, she was getting on up in age. And uh, we don't mind, if that was her wish to aid your ministry, we don't mind helping you at all, but that's our inheritance. And she's taken our inheritance and she's given it to you and we don't think that's right. Will you, will you return that to us and then we'll work out something that will be a blessing to your ministry? Swaggart wrote back to his lawyers and said, absolutely not. Money's mine now, it's legally Mine now, and I'm going to keep it. They sued Swaggart Ministries in court. They lost. Swaggart gets to keep the money. It wasn't too long after that that his whole ministry fell apart 
when it was discovered that he was meeting in hotels with these women. Just watching. Baloney. So I'm telling you, God's watching these guys. God is watching these guys. And um, all of us ministers, I believe, held to a little bit higher standard and responsibility than other people simply because of the trust that God puts in our hands. It is a huge responsibility. It is a responsibility that even though failure is part of it, we can't afford failure because it costs too much. It hurts people. Boy, don't I know that. Now, I'm going to get back to what we were talking about on Tuesday. And I guess, uh, I guess um, showing this false prophet here and so on. And, and remember now, uh, come April 8th, if there's a rapture, He'll, he'll know that, that I'm, I'm sorry for, for, uh, for not listening to him. I, what I'm saying to you is, I don't believe it for one second. I don't believe that the rapture is going to happen April 8th just because there is a total eclipse going through St. Genevieve, town called Cape Girardeau, Missouri. My dad called it Cape Girada. Um, Eastern Missouri was settled by the French, in case you were wondering. Saint Genevieve is one of their, it's probably got to be a French saint somewhere. I don't, I don't know who she is, but anyway. So I don't believe it. We'll see April 8th. And I've still got, I've still got Mike, um, Oh, the health ranger, Mike Adams. I still have his article from 2020 saying that in five years, most of you reading this article will be dead. I still have that article, and uh, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. 2025 rolls around. I'm going to pull that thing out, and I'm going to say, look at there. The guy's a liar. Okay. All right, we were, we were discussing, um, no, discussing, we were talking about how the soul is her. Um, get my pen out here. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And we looked at, I'm not going to rehash all of that. Go back and listen to Tuesday's Pastor Mike online live broadcast, and you'll hear the teaching. I want to scoot on down. Um, let's see here. Oh, look at, yeah, this is where we were getting at in Book of Proverbs. Uh, remember that in the Book of Proverbs, I got to, let's see here. Let me do this. Let me click that and take oh, no, that and take away that and that and add this. And we'll take away that and that and that. And we'll type in the word her in the book of Proverbs. And it's found in 66 verses. We'll take the word she. And it's found 55 occurrences in 44 verses. All of those multiples of 11. And as I said Tuesday, 11 seems to be a word or a number that uh, that and its multiples either point you to foolishness or folly uh, and misunderstanding uh, or knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Remember, when Judas takes his own life and there's only 11 disciples, when uh, Mary and Mary Magdalene are trying to convince the disciples that Jesus is alive, the Bible says that uh, to the 11 that it that seemed uh, un, as idle tales unto them. In other words, they didn't believe it. And, and it's because, and it always mentions the 11, the 11, the 11. And it wasn't until after, in the book of Acts chapter 1, 
where they finally voted on, they cast lots for someone to take that 12th position in uh, the list of the apostles that finally then, right after that, the Holy Ghost comes down upon all of them and, and fills them with the Spirit of God. And uh, so anyway, we, you look through the book of Proverbs, you, you find uh, verses like, Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. And I believe that this shows God's knowledge, God's understanding, God's wisdom being manifested through those saints who are the bride of Christ who go out outside of the church, outside of the four walls of this building, and we try to fill the earth with the salt of the earth. We try to fill this world with the gospel, with the words of God, to teach the world the wisdom of God and to show the world that Christ is real. He really is God. He is the creator of everything. And that if man wants salvation or redemption or a second chance or a thousand second chances, they can give and yield themselves over to the Lord Jesus Christ and he will in no wise cast out. Amen. Now, now let's go to the opposite. Oh, what is the soul? We didn't cover that. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. It's God's breath. Job 12.10, in whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. And it's referring to God. The, every soul that's born in this world is in the hand of God. He's the one that causes them to follow him, to, he does things for them. He causes them to do things for him and his glory. Every, that's why I tell people, every, every good thing that you do for the Lord Jesus Christ was not your idea. It was God's. And every, every soul that you help lead to salvation that was God through you not you through God and I think some pastors Michael Brown have that messed up uh, Job 33 18 he keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life look at there Our, his soul is his life when the Bible gives you uh, a double sentence like that that's its way of defining one and the other our life is in our soul, and our soul is our life. That's what God breathed into man, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. He keepeth, keep God, God keepeth back our soul from the pit. God is the one keeping you from going to hell. You ought to, you ought to thank him every now and then. Thank you, God from keeping me from going to hell, from keeping my life from perishing by the sword. Hey, you know who's holding that sword? You know who's got that sword? Strange woman. Job 33, 30, to bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light of the living. Look at that. That word enlightened. And see, the devil promised Eve a false enlightenment. He said, For God doth know in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. The devil promised Eve a false enlightenment. And it's, it's I'm making notes 
on a new video series um, that I'm working on. And um, this one is called Sightings in the Spiritual Realm. And I believe that right now there is an increase in sightings of a paranormal nature, of a spiritual nature, of an occult nature. Uh, see people seeing spirits, people seeing haunts and poltergeist activity, and um, ghosts, boogers. That's what they call them down in the deep south, down in Arkansas, boogers. We would say boogeyman. Uh, spirits that dwell in earthly places, including earthly houses or the wilderness. Um, but anyway, he has a, a dark knowledge to give to mankind. Satan does. God has the light of the living to give to us, to fill us. We are children of the day and not children of the night. Therefore, let us not sleep, but let us, um, therefore, let us not sleep, but let us be sober. Sobriety and being enlightened by God all go together. You cannot be a physical or spiritual drunk and be under the influence of alcohol or an evil spirit and then come up with some good teachings. That Michael Brown that I just showed you is a perfect example of what a spiritual drunk is. He is out of the way through strong drink. He cannot walk, he cannot keep a straight doctrinal line. It's crooked like serpents are. When serpents lead the way, they lead the way like this. They can't, you've never seen a snake just go in a straight line. Anyway, Psalm 30, verse 30, O, o Lord, oh, verse 3, O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. There it is again. Thank you, God, for not letting me fall down in the pit. Amen? Where is the soul? Job 14 says, His flesh upon him shall have pain, and his soul within him shall mourn. So it's in side of this physical body that you and I have. Um, take a guess. And that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just kind of throwing things out there for you today. We know that God breathed into Adam's nostrils and now he has a soul. So, stands to reason then that something about our lungs and um, the, the air that we take in and so on may have something to do with the soul. Also, also, we know that the life is in the blood. So, is it possible that our soul could have something to do with our blood? I th think it's possible. One thing I do know for sure is that with almost every cell in your body, there is a very teeny, tiny little book called deoxyribonucleic acid and it's a book that God wrote and it's a book of life and if you want to get down nitpicky about it I do I think that the human soul is in our DNA think about that for a millennium and see what comes up all right Pre pleasant words are as in honeycomb 
sweet to the soul and health to the bones. He's talking about the Word of God. Now, here we go. Here we go. Music, please. Notice this. King Solomon loved many strange women. 700 wives, 300 concubines. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, Zidonians and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You should not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. And what's interesting to me is, while Solomon's heart is being turned away, God allowed him to retain his wisdom. He says that in Ecclesiastes, uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes. I have in my notes Ecclesiastes 2, or as some people say, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, I said in mine heart, Go to now, I will prove thee with mirth, therefore enjoy pleasure. Behold, this also is vanity. I said of laughter, it is mad, and of mirth, what doeth it? I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom. See, he's holding on to his wisdom because God is allowing him to like view his life from the outside. As Solomon is living this, I'll say it like this. He's living every man's dream. And I mean that. Literally, everything that any, any and every man on earth has ever desired to have or lusted after, Solomon had at least a thousand of them. Okay? He didn't have just one. He had a bunch of them. Men who desire more than one woman. Solomon had a thousand. A thousand women that would never tell him no. What, are you kidding me? He had chariots, so he had cars. He had the best sound system in the world. He had live musicians anytime he wanted them. He had wine so he could get buzzed and get drunk if he wanted to. He had power over people. Nations came to give him uh, praise and adoration, they just didn't want Solomon declaring war on them because they knew he they these countries knew God's with them. God's not going to let this guy fail. We better go and make peace with Solomon and, and the Jews. Solomon sits on that throne, and they bring him presents from around the world. He's rich. He's got all this tax money that he's collected. He, I mean, he's got everything that you and I guys ever wanted as much as he wants it whenever he wants it and he said uh, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men which they should do under the heaven in all the days of their life I made me great works I built me houses planted me vineyards I made me gardens orchards I planted trees of all kinds of fruits Pools of water to water there with the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that. I mean, he's got everything. And he said, Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. What a life. It's like so many movie stars, TV stars, rock stars sell their souls to the devil. They get all the power, all the fame, all the money, all the women that they want, all the drugs and alcohol that they want. They get everything. And uh, you have a list of them that died at 27. Janis Joplin um, who else? Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Amy Winehouse, Kurt Cobain, Angus Young. Um, 
Anton Yeltsin, 27 years old. He played the new Chekhov on the new Star Trek movies. And um, he was a real Russian-born actor, Anton Yeltsin. That was his name. So he, is, he had a much better Russian accent. But anyway, he played in a rock band on the side just to have something to do. And in a freak accident, he's 27 years old. He's, he's got this sports car and a, and a house in the hills there outside Los Angeles that's on a hill. And he's got to pull up his driveway like this and park his car. And he pulls up his driveway. He walks down to the end of the driveway to get the paper and the mail. And the car came down and smashed him up against a hedgerow or something like that and killed him. Freak accident. 27 years old. Anyway, moving right along. When the devil says you're going to pay the dues, you pay the dues. Now, here is, here is the other woman. So let's think about this for a minute. If the soul of all the people in the world who are redeemed, if they together, when Christ brings us all together, when he appears in the clouds, and all of us collectively make up the body of Jesus Christ, his bride... Okay, you follow me so far? All Christians, born again, right now and on the day, especially when Christ appears in the air, we all come together and we are one body in Jesus Christ. We are literally his body. We are his flesh. We are his bone. He's the head. We're the body. And we're, now we're inseparable. The exact opposite, then, is true. That leaves you with all of the people who have ever lived on this earth who died without faith in God. They're not born again. They're not saved. They are not the bride of Christ. They're not part of the church. Who are they? They are her. Mystery. Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So if your soul is a harlot soul, then that's who you are and that's where you came from. Think about it. If she is the mother of harlots and Jerusalem above is the mother of us as saints, you see how that makes sense now? So you got two women. You have the... the um, the glorious church without spot or wrinkle. And then you have the strange woman. The word strange, meaning not of this area, not of this country, not of this world. So let's look at the Bible. In Proverbs 2, when wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee and understanding shall keep thee. So here we have a verse on the doctrine of the preservation of God's saints. What is it that preserves us? discretion. Where do you get discretion from? The Word of God. Everything revolves around the Word of God. If you're going to be a saint of God, 
and be part of his body, but then you reject God's word. That, that doesn't work, does it? Those two things don't go together very well. Now, here is our doppelganger, our exact opposite double. Proverbs 2.16, to deliver thee from the strange woman. That's her and every body that has been alive or is alive now that refuses to walk after the precepts of God, refuses the wisdom that God gives through the church, refuses that wisdom, they are the strange woman. The stranger which flattereth with her words. So here you got a preacher a while ago, Dr. Mickle Brown, and he says, if you do works, you can have riches from God. That's basically just a boiled down version I boiled them okra down, okay? That's a boiled down version of what was being said there. And, and his ministry. If you do works for God, God will pay you. If you don't do anything because you don't know what to do and you wait on God, oh, well, now if you wait, you just might miss the bus now. You, you'll just miss all of the blessings that God has given everybody else. You're going to miss it out if you just sit and wait. So basically, in other words, stand up, get your wallet out, put a crowbar in it, and fork it over. I want me a new plane like Copeland has. Um, verse... 17, which forsaketh the guide of her youth. Listen, she went astray a long time ago. And I, I went to church with kids my age. Some still live in the area. And I, I hate to say things like this because I don't want it to sound like I'm boasting because I'm not. Um, a lot of these kids that I was friends with here, gone. One of my best friends since seventh grade, uh, I'm not going to tell his name, but I mean, we did everything together. We were buddies. We had a lot of things in common. A lot of things. His parents were good Christian parents. Um, we first got together at a Christian school. And we graduated high school the same year. He went to a college in Arkansas. I went to Oklahoma. And before the before his freshman year was even done with i was talking to him on the phone once and he said that he was doubting the existence of god now and i went do what and what it was he was taking a philosophy course at this state college now he is a um he's a scientist Believes in evolution. We are as far from each other as night from day. I tried to get reacquainted with him on Facebook. Didn't go very far. So I just let it go. But some people forsake the guide of their youth. God guides them. God teaches them. And this, listen, you see our church full of kids. I love it. I absolutely love it. 
We've got young families now in our church, and, and they're starting to plan some things, you know, for everybody to get involved, and I, I, I love it. Uh, but what inevitably will happen in some of these kids' life, including some of my own grandchildren, is that they will forsake the guide of their youth and forgetteth the covenant of her God. They're going to, we're teaching them John 3.16, but they're just, going, they're just going to forget about it. For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. None that go unto her, that's part of it, return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. Here, right here, are the paths of life. Right here, and they're the old paths too. Amen. <laughs> Seek ye out the old paths. Whew. I like the old paths. I like pulling into a town somewhere I've never been in, drive around and try to find the old roadways, the old highways. Some of them are still, the old Route 66 is still present in various areas from Chicago to L.A. And it's neat to, to see them. You, a lot of times you can see these little one-room motor lodges um, alongside the old Route 66. And they're basically just a bed with a sink and a little toilet, maybe a bathtub. And if you're lucky... Black and white television. Okay? But that's all from the old Route 66 days. And they, like I said, they weren't one, one building. They were, they were these little cottages that you stayed in. Probably cost you $3 a night or something like that, which was an outrageous price. But anyway, see, I like stuff like that. It, it just fascinates me. But seek out the old paths, people. Now! Speaking of strange women, I am going to include this in here. You may have heard me share this. This is from Whitley Strieber's book, Communion. And let me give you the background on Whitley Strieber. Before Whitley Strieber became an advocate not an adversary, but an advocate for human alien, um, what, what do we call it? Human alien relationships. Before that, he wrote a book called The Wolfen. It was about that thick. Well, they shrunk it down. It became a Hollywood movie back in the 80s called Wolfen. And I, I vaguely remember seeing it. Um, must have been like 1985, somewhere around 86, I think. But anyway, um, so he's got some credit to his name. And unbeknownst to the world and me at the time, Whitley Strieber and his wife, they practiced meditation. You see, they had been taught these New Age practices, and they were, they were, you know, they would sit on the floor and wad their legs up and tie them in a little pretzel knot, and they would go om, 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 and na, 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 things like that, or whatever it was, so that their brain was completely void of anything, and they made a space now for whoever they wanted to get in, and they would get in contact with these ascended masters. What they didn't know, what they should have known, but what they didn't know was they were asking her to show up. Well, lo and behold, Whitley Strieber starts having nightmares. And he starts having missing time. And he, he's got a cottage out up in New England somewhere, you know, from his money, selling the book and the movie and everything like that. And he wakes up in the middle of the woods, 
in his underwear in the middle of the night and he's got to find his way back to his cottage and uh, I lost my iPad again. Anyway, he's got to find his way back to, the, to his cottage and crawl back in bed and wonder what happened. He finally does regression and finds out he's being uh, taken by these little gray things. Well, this creature on the front here of the book, he had an artist paint up a, uh, you know, an artist rendering of what this creature looked like. Come to find out, this is a female alien. Now, what I just said was a strange woman. Because that's the definition of the word strange. When you have estranged yourself, you know, what a, a legal grounds for divorce in this country is estrangement. Which basically means the husband let out, he run off. And he hasn't been seen in three years. He's not coming back. And so you, uh, you can sue for divorce for estrangement. He's turned completely against you and turned away from you. And he's a stranger now. He's not part of your household. He's not from there. It's the meaning of the word. She and all her little underlings are not from here. They are from a different realm, a different dimension. But she, and, and the reason why this is such a big deal is that Streber admitted openly and gladly that he was having intimate relations with this thing, this strange woman. And he said it was so intense. And I'm like, how do you talk about this with your wife sitting there? But apparently, she was having stuff of her own going on. I don't know. Streber claims that just recently, in the last several years, uh, his wife passed away. Streber claims that he was holding on to her both in the physical world and in the ethereal realm, the spiritual realm. And that when she closed her eyes and stopped breathing here on this earth, he left his body as she left hers and he was holding on to her hand, flying up through the cosmos, going through the stars, until it got to a point where she turned around and said, Witty, that's what she called him, Witty, Witty, you have to let go of me now. You can't come any farther. And she said, I'll still be around. It's okay. So he comes back into his body. A couple years later, he writes a book. And he says, I didn't write it. My wife did. She gave me all of the words, the sentences, the storyline, everything, the knowledge. She gave that to me supernaturally. I'm telling you, that's the heart and the core of what the strange woman is all about. When you forsake the guide of your youth and you forget the covenant that you grew up on, when you forsake Christianity and forsake John 3.16, there, that leaves a void in your life and you will fill that void. And the devil's right there with a box of Wheaties void filler cereal with raisins and he dumps it in there and now, now you, can, uh, 
you can practice extrasensory perception. You can read people's minds. You can do telekinesis. You can predict the future. You can, uh, you can get in touch with past lives. You can contact ascended masters and spirits from the spirit realm. You can do all of these things that God said in Deuteronomy 18, don't do. God said the people of this land are doing this, and this is why I'm having them all killed off. And God said, these things are dangerous. God's just not uh, taking this away from them as a buzzkill to Israel. He's doing it because he knows how dangerous these strangers are. And he wants to protect his people. I mean, isn't that why, isn't that why your mother... Or your dad tried to teach, or your grandma, somebody tried to teach you from the youngest age that you would listen. If a man or somebody invites you to come over to their car, don't do it. My sister and my cousin, we went down to Arkansas for a visit. And uh, there was a man, they were walking down, this, there used to be a little store, a little grocery store, about four blocks from where our our grandmother, grandpa lived in Jacksonville, Arkansas, and they were walking down to this. We used to go down there and get candy. And they're walking down there, and on their way back, some guy pulled up in a car, and he hollers out the window, Hey, would you, would you guys like to see a puppy? Yeah. Yeah, that's what he did. And so your parents or somebody's telling you, don't go over to that car. It doesn't make sense to you. But they're telling you, don't go over there. It's dangerous. And some kids listen, some kids don't. The kids that listen will live. And they'll be saved from whatever horrors that person would have done to them. And this is why God is telling people. Don't get involved with witchcraft. Don't get involved with seeking out familiar spirits. Don't do it. Don't call unto the ascended masters. Don't look to your ancestors. Don't pray to the saints. Don't do it, God says. But people do it anyway, and Whitley Stryber was doing it. So he's making calls to these spirits, and all of a sudden they show up. Imagine that. The same well, I won't say the same, exact same story, but one with the same source is the book that I read last year, UFO of God. Here it is. This is Da Vinci's painting of who he said Jesus was. I'm not buying it. But anyway, the, the message here from Chris Bledsoe, and I've watched several of his videos, I, I, I get it. I understand who he is. He was a Southern Baptist deacon, and then he married a Pentecostal wife, and he gets into Pentecostalism, he's a member of the church, member in good standing of the church, actually. And then him and his son get this missing time thing from this UFO, and they still haven't revealed what happened during that missing time. I think they have been regressed. They just haven't told everybody what happened. Or at least I have not found where he tells that. But anyway, um, he starts seeing UFOs on a regular basis. He starts seeing orbs outside of his house. He starts seeing shadow people running across his windows outside of his house, inside of his house. He's seeing all kinds of stuff. And it's frustrating him. And it distanced him and his son. His son is like, I didn't, I didn't ask for this. I'm not, I'm not as into this as my dad is. And it was just caused a lot of heartache. Well, one day he's outside. It's, it's almost dark. And he sees this cloud open up. And here comes this bull. Look down here. Racing at him at 100 miles an hour. And... He gets out of the way just in time, and when he stands back up and looks, here's this woman. Now, I 
keep thinking she looks like Hillary Clinton for some reason. I don't know, but I'm, I'm just freaking out. But he had an artist draw up this image. Notice that there is a UFO there in the back. There's an owl there. Look at that. Dun, dun, dun. And there's the bull. And here is what he constantly referred to as the lady. And there was another UFO speaker. Uh, I'm trying to think of his name. He was a uh, former military. And he spoke of, in his talk once, about there were numerous sightings of this beautiful, blonde-haired, angelic-looking woman that everybody referred to as the lady. Well, that's what Chris Bledsoe's calling this one. And she's there with the bull. Look up the image of Europa and the bull. And she's there with the bull. You know, they made one of those in the wilderness, the Jews did, and got them in a lot of trouble. But anyway, she tells Chris Bledsoe, she says, um, I know you got a lot of questions, and uh, uh, over time I'm going to help you out with them, but I want you to understand that we've chosen you, and um, you're someone very special, and we're going to, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're going to show you more in the future. In fact, we're going to let you start taking video and pictures of these aliens and these orbs and these ships and things like that. And uh, we're going we're gonna to let you prophesy. We're going to let you make predictions and they're going to happen. Now, how can a spirit like that, and that's who that is, it's a spirit. How can a spirit like that, an evil spirit, make an event or, or have foreknowledge of, let's say, some disastrous event. Well, they caused it. They tell somebody like Nostradamus or somebody uh, that this and this and this is going to happen at noon tomorrow. There's going to be a train derailment uh, in uh, Pakistan. It's going to kill 158 people. Lo and behold, the next day it hits the papers. There was a, a train derailment, 158 people killed. And you're just going, oh, my goodness. I heard that from this lady. She must be of God. No. It's just that the principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this and the spiritual wickedness caused that to happen and they killed 158 people. That's how that stuff happens. Um, look at the story of Micaiah prophesying to uh, King Jehoshaphat and King Ahab. And he basically, uh, he tells, I, I saw what happened. A spirit came to God and said, God, I can fool Ahab into going to battle. And God said, how? And he said, I'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. So his prophets all said, Ahab, we've seen, we've seen it from God. God's going to give you the victory. You just head on into battle. And they didn't know, and he didn't know that he was heading into his own, his own casket. And the dogs were going to lick up his blood in the exact same place that he killed uh, Naboth. But this woman here bears a striking resemblance, striking resemblance to the story that the pseudonym of Joe Friday told me at MUFON in Las Vegas that a saucer-shaped ship was flying at roof level just beyond his house. He was on the high back porch of the house. And she was surrounded by children, roughly his age. He was about five. And he said that she was beckoning him to come into... Uh, the ship with her, but young Joe Friday looked at the children there, and he didn't want anything to do with it. And the next time she's trying to force him in there, she said he's got she's got some kind of beam on me, like pulling me. And he said, "I'm so scared, I just fell backward." 
And he said, once I hit the ground, I got up and ran in the house, went and got my sister. We both came running out, and she and the ship was gone. But this lady is at least a part of what the strange woman is all about in scriptures. Guarantee you. I don't make too many guarantees. But she, she fits the bill. Bledsoe said, I then used my hands and knees to lift myself off the ground. And that's when I noticed that in front of me is a beautiful woman. She's floating three feet off the ground and is about six feet away from me. She was four to five feet tall and her feet floated chin level to me since I was still near the ground. She had on a long white dress that went up to her neck, had beautiful blue eyes along with flowing blonde hair. She looks at me and says, you know why I'm here. This is your burden you must carry. You don't want to ex accept what, I, what you have been told to tell regarding the orbs he had been seeing for the past five years. If you do tell the story, I will be with you and I will guide you. She also told me other stuff, but I can't reveal that now. I can't talk about these things since they all have to do with future events. And yet Chris Bledsoe has gotten the attention of people in the CIA, people in the Pentagon, people who run um, special access programs or black programs. They're off the books uh, programs that are run by the Pentagon, by the Department of Defense. This is why the Pentagon and certain congressmen are working feverishly against any kind of government making the people of America aware of the relationship that the Pentagon has with UFOs. And by the way, this, I recognize this. They took the description of this woman and asked AI to paint four pictures. And AI did it. Watch out, AI. Watch out. Yes, I'm talking to AI. Watch out, AI. I've got a God that knows more than you do and will always know more than you do. A man by the name of David Huggins. I don't suggest you go looking him up. They made a documentary film on him. Lo and behold, when he told his wife that a very beautiful and voluptuous alien woman was coming through the wall of their house to fornicate with David on a regular basis, lo and behold, doggone it, dad nabbit, she went out and filed for divorce. Can you, can you imagine that? You see, these people are doing exactly what God said, don't do. They're committing whoredoms with devils. Now, you may not believe that, but I tell you, if you look in the Bible at the bodies that angels have in various places, Genesis 18 and 19 is one place I can think of where the two angels sat down to eat, had their feet washed by uh, Abraham and his servants, had some very, very good vittles at Abraham's house, left and went to Sodom, and lo and behold, sat down again, had another plate of food. And then when they went outside, 
they found out that the men of Sodom, both young and old, wanted to getting to know you, getting to know all about you. And it got so bad that the two angels had to strike all of those men and boys with blindness. But this stuff is going on. It's Remember, Babylon is the mother of what? Harlots. And then you have the people, a lot of female human women that are being seeded by alien life forms. And often, these women are shown their hybrid children that are never allowed to come to this earth. They, could, they must remain on the ship. I don't know why. But it fits in perfectly with exactly what Solomon said, or excuse me, not Solomon, but Daniel said the dream that Nebuchadnezzar was having. He said, this is about the kingdoms that are coming to the earth. And the fourth kingdom is going to be more powerful than the other three. It's not going to be conquered by silver and gold and brass. But a stone that's cut without hands is going to come and destroy it. But he said it's, it's all about they, these whatever in the spiritual world, these evil angels mingling themselves with the seed of men. And this is at least part of what you get out of it. And I believe that they're possibly working on a hybridization that will look alarmingly human. Alarmingly human. Imagine that, people, the world that's coming to this world is a world that I don't want to be any part of. So, but I'll tarry as long as God has me down here. You know, now, if I did what Dr. Mickle Brown tells me to do, I have to make my own way to heaven or God will think I don't want to go. And I just, I just can't have that on my conscience. Anyway, you're the reason why we do what we do. I hope you know that. Hope you know that uh, we love you here. I do. And I love God's people, whether we agree on everything or not. And uh, I hope that God blesses you. Um, as he blesses me and others, I hope God blesses you. In fact, you can have all the blessings first. I'll let you have first take, all right? If you need them, then so be it. But the Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday morning. Come visit us for church time at Bethel. They must have, by the way, they must have taken my, I've got a Facebook page called uh, Bethel Church Online or something like that. It's all one word. We can't link to it through Wirecast, which tells me that Facebook has blocked it for some reason. I must be in Facebook jail for something that I didn't do. It's probably my adversary again. Anyway, God bless you. I love you. Always think Bible.